Hi there. My name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech, and we've been spending the last several lectures looking at solutions to the wave equation. Y represented a displacement of a guitar string perpendicular to the length of the string, and so we have a double derivative in the spatial component on the left and a double derivative in the time component on the right. And that's a really terrible looking partial, but you get the idea. Anyway, T is the tension of the string and mu is the mass per unit length. We've been looking at solutions based primarily on Fourier series ideas. Here I'm going to explore an alternative way of approaching the problem having to do with traveling waves. I'm going to claim that this, for some generic f sub r, is a general solution of the wave equation. Now, this x minus ct, if you'll remember from EC3084, if you're one of my students at Georgia Tech, then this minus stuff here indicates that we're shifting to the right in space as time is increasing, assuming c is positive, which we're going to say it is. Anyway, so this is a waveform that's going to the right. This is called a traveling wave. Let's make sure that this is indeed a solution to this equation. So on the left, we'll have t, and then we'll have fr. And now this is a one-dimensional function, and I'm taking a double derivative of it. And I'm going to put two dots up here since this is now unambiguous, x minus ct here I have to use the chain rule. So when I'm taking the derivative with respect to x, I could actually make this t very big because there's nothing going in front. I was leaving space in front to put something, but I forgot I don't actually need to put anything here. Okay, so on the right, we have the same thing. We'll have now mu on the right, but now we will have something in front, so I'll leave some space. So I have fr double dot x minus ct, and now with the chain rule, when I take the double derivative with respect to time, I have a minus c that comes out twice. So the minuses cancel, and I get sc squared. And notice that in order for this equality to hold in general, I would need t to be equal to mu c squared. So I need c squared to equal to t divided by mu. So c is equal to square root of t divided by mu. So the square root of t over mu is the speed of the wave traveling along the string. Similarly, I can suggest a solution that involves a wave traveling to the left. I could write fl equal x plus ct, and all of the above math still works. Just when I take the double derivative, I don't have to worry about the two minuses canceling to give me a plus out here. I just get the plus automatically. So these are two possible solutions to my differential equation. So a general solution could involve a waveform that is traveling to the right plus a waveform that is traveling to the left. Now let's think about how initial conditions might manifest themselves in this kind of formulation. So we've defined an initial condition gx as being the initial position of the string. So if we were to plug zero into the expression up here, we wind up with fr x plus fl x, and that's just what we get from plugging in t equals zero. We also defined the initial velocity of the string as being the derivative with respect to time evaluated at t equals zero. So I'll have a minus c in front from the chain rule, fr dot x, and I won't have a minus ct because I'm plugging in zero for t, and then from the chain rule on the second term I'll have plus c flx. What I'm going to do now is integrate both sides of this equation because I really want to get rid of the dots here. So I'm going to integrate from some arbitrary point. I'm going to call it a. It doesn't really matter what it is. Up to x. And here, let me put a tilde over the x to indicate it's a dummy variable of integration, dx. So on the right, I'll have minus c fr x minus fr a. Most expositions leave out this a part. 
they leave it kind of magical, but I find it very confusing if I try to do that. So I'll write then plus C FL evaluated at X minus FL A. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to have FR and FL on one side of the equation by itself. So I'm going to write equals FRX plus FLX. So that's all over there. And then on the left, I'll have integral going from A to X, my VX tilde, DX tilde. All right, and then moving over to this side, the constant here, I'll have a minus times a minus, which is a plus, move it over to the other side, I'll have minus FRA. And then here I'll have a minus FLA. When I move it over to the other side, I'll have plus FLA. And the elephant in the room that I've been ignoring is that there's a C here, so I need to divide everything here by C. Whoops, and I forgot a minus sign here. There's a minus sign from right there. All right, so I want to combine the purple and the blue equations. All right, so I have a purple equation, and I have a blue equation. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine these equations. So the first thing I want to do is let's try purple plus blue. So if I add the purple equation and the blue equation, the FRs on the right cancel, and then I have two FLX on the right. And then on the left, I'll have GX from up here. Then I'll have plus my integral from A to X, VX tilde, DX tilde. And then I'll have my minus FRA plus FLA. And this is all over C. But I can go ahead and divide both sides by 2. So I can put a 2 here, and I'll divide by 2 here. Now let me subtract the two equations. If I subtract the blue equation from the purple equation, on the right, the FLs cancel. But when I take FRX minus minus FRX, I wind up with a 2 FRX on the right. And I know I'm going to divide by 2 eventually, so let me just go ahead and do that. So. Yeah, there's a 2 FRX, but I'm going to divide both sides by 2. So then what is left on the left? Well, I have GX minus all of this stuff. And then all of this stuff is going to be divided by 2C here. And then it'll be divided by 2 here. Yeah, I probably should use PowerPoint for this. Anyway, let's now try to remember where we started with all of this. We started this discussion with this solution to the wave equation. So let me actually copy that. So let me grab this whole mess here. And let's substitute in what we found. For FRX, I'll have G, and I'm substituted in X minus CT. And I'm actually going to skip around a bit. So let me go ahead and do the G term for FL. So I'll have G x plus ct, and all of these things are divided by 2. And well, what about all of this stuff with a? Well, these cancel. So this minus and plus cancel, this plus and this minus cancel. So all of that stuff with the a didn't really matter anyway. Okay, so what about the integrals here? Well, if we think about fl, we're going to be plugging in x plus ct. And if we think about FR, we're going to be plugging in X minus CT. And notice we're subtracting one integral from the other, where we're plugging in different Xs, but we're keeping the lower limit the same. So I can actually combine this and write this as a single integral going from X minus CT to X plus CT, integrating over VX. So I'm using tildes to indicate the variable of integration. This whole thing divided by 2c. So here's a solution to the wave equation that doesn't involve any Fourier series expansions or anything like that. It's directly in terms of the initial conditions on the position and the velocity. Now there is one sticky point, which is that this is basically for an infinite string. 
I probably should have mentioned that earlier. Notice that our string in our guitar is only defined between zero and L, but all of this here involves asking questions for the entire real line. But it's not too hard to take our formulation for a finite string between zero and L and apply this formula to it. The idea is we can create what's called an odd periodic extension. So the general idea here is that we have a g of x, and this is defined for x in a range going from 0 to l. And we want to make up some values for it outside of that range. So let's let g of x equal minus g of minus x. So this is the odd part of the extension. And for the periodic part, what we'll do is we'll say, let's let g of x plus 2l equal g of x. So it has a period of 2l, and it has this odd anti-symmetric structure. And we'll do the same thing for vx. So we'll say that vx is equal to minus v minus x vx plus 2l is equal to vx. So what we've done is we've taken the shape on our string, we've flipped it around the origin, grabbed that chunk of 2l, and then replicated that. If we do that, the solution to our wave equation still works. It gives us the right answer in this range between 0 and l. But let's check to make sure this structure satisfies the boundary conditions. So let's see what happens if we zero out x. So if we zero out x, I wind up with g minus ct plus g plus ct, but we know from this odd characteristic that we've defined, one of these is equal to the minus of the other, so those terms go away. And if I get rid of the x here, well, I'm integrating v between minus ct and plus ct, but I could split that into two halves, and I know one half of the integral is going to be the negative of the other, so that zeroes out as well. So this whole thing equals zero. Okay, so what about the other endpoint at L? So if I put an L here, L, L, and this is now an L, and this is now an L, well, remember that if it's periodic with 2L, I could subtract 2L from here, and if I take l and subtract 2l, it's like putting a minus sign here. And now I have that nice structure where I have l plus ct here, and I have the negative of that here. And from this odd symmetry, I know that that all zeroes out. And now I need to think about the integral. So I have an l here and an l here. Okay, so this is a little tricky to think about. The way I think about it is, I know v is periodic with period 2l, so I could also say that vx plus l is equal to v of x minus l. That's another way of saying it's periodic with period 2l. And then I could write minus v minus x plus l from the odd symmetry. So I can think about vx plus l itself as being an odd function with respect to the parameter x. Okay, now let me do something like a change of variable. So let me define smiley face is equal to x tilde minus l. So x tilde is equal to smiley face plus l. Let's see, so then in here in the integral, this is now going to be v smiley face plus L, and we're now integrating over smiley face. And as far as the integrands are concerned, I can take what's in the integrands and subtract L, so these go away. All right, so now I'm integrating over smiley face, and I know that in terms of this Vx plus L, this is a odd function in terms of the smiley face variable. So when I integrate smiley face from minus ct to plus ct, this integral goes away and goes to zero. Okay, that's probably the most complicated thing we're going to do all semester. And if you didn't follow every detail there, that's okay. I'm not sure I did either. In any case, 
the main take-home message is this expression. Interpreting what that velocity term is doing is kind of complicated, but assuming zero velocity for a moment, you have this really nice expression in terms of your initial conditions. One set of odd periodic extended initial conditions moving to the left and another set moving to the right. And notice that these manage to cancel each other out at the endpoints to give you the zeros at the boundary conditions.